Beloved in Christ, we'd like to thank you for joining us here at Understanding of the Father's Heart Ministries. I'm Evangelist and Teacher Joseph A. Brown. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you for this day. We thank you, Father God, for the opportunity, Father God, to be able to share your word. We pray, Father God, that you will touch the minds and the hearts who hear your word, that, Father God, that it may be entangled in their spirit, Lord God, that they will hear it, and, Father, that they will begin to walk in your word. We thank you, Father God, for all that you are doing by your spirit. We thank you for the healings. We thank you for the financial blessings. We thank you, Father God, for the hope that you give us, Father God, in a world that seems to be so hopeless at this moment, Father. Lord God, but we put all our hope in you as our deliverer, as our redeemer, as our salvation, Father. For without you, Father, we could do nothing. But because of your Son, his life, his death, and his resurrection, we have hope. And we thank you for it, Father. Father God, we pray that you will bless each and every one, Father, this day, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Glory be to the living God. What a glorious God we serve. You know, our circumstances may be seemingly great, but our Lord is always greater than our circumstances. He just called us to trust in Him and to believe in Him and to acknowledge Him as our God. Beloved, one of the greatest struggles that we will ever have as a human being is to get our spirit, the spirit of man, to bow down to the spirit of God. And what do I mean by bow down to the Spirit of God? By simply just trusting God. Because, beloved, before we come to know the Lord and are born again, we have basically done everything on our own. Even at times when we heard the voice of God, and it might have been through others, and it may have awaken our spirit momentarily. We always went back to our old way of doing things. And even after we come to know Him and we give our life over to Him, still we do many times the things the way that we have always done them. And, you know, the greatest battle that we're going to have is to get our willpower to uh, allow now God's willpower, the great I am willpower, to begin to control our lives. When we look at the life of Moses, and which we have been sharing on lately, we know that he had come from the backside of the desert because he had put himself in that situation due to the fact that he had heard from God that he wanted to deliver his people through him. And he went about doing it his own way. And that was to kill the Egyptian individual and then to lead the children of God. He believed that God would use them that way. But you see, the Lord leads us not by power, not by might, not by our own strength, but by the Spirit of God He leads us. And now we have to put down our sword, our weapons, because they are no longer carnal. Amen? Moses had not got to that point to realize that the weapons that God was going to use to deliver the children of Israel was his own power. 
and not the power of Moses. He is not depending upon our human strength, our human spirit, in order to deliver us or to place us in the right place that we ought to be. But rather, he's trying to teach us how to rely totally upon him in every situation in our lives. Sometimes we pray for answers and we seemingly get our answers either from someone else or from our own way of thinking and believe that God gave us that answer. And usually that answer that the Lord gives us is to be still and know that I am God. For if you do just that, then I can use you and I can work the situation out where you will never ever be able to say that through my own wisdom, through my own strength, through my own ability, my cleverness, I made it through somehow. No, beloved, the Lord wanted to be to the point where there is no doubt that God delivered us. And this is the place where he's trying to get Moses because Moses is still thinking, well, Lord, what do I have to do? What strength do I have to have? What mental capacities I have to work from that I'll be able to deliver the children of Israel? And beloved, God can deliver us with his own strength and his own power. And even when he sent us forth to share with our loved ones, with co-workers, with friends, he will do it. He will open up that door, that effectual door. Now, we can open a door and try to force, as one might say, our experience, our religion, as some will say. But, beloved, when we allow the Lord to open the door because of our faithfulness through prayer and faith and hope that God desired to deliver those whom we are praying for and believing for, beloved, that door will be open for witnessing. But it will be an effectual door that the great I am has opened and not you opening it and forcing it open and try to push the word of God on them and that they should taste it. Beloved, it's like trying to force food into a baby's mouth who's crying and belly aching and don't want what you're giving them, what happens? They ultimately what? Spit it out. Because they don't want it. But if you wait for them to be hungry enough, they will eat just about anything that you put in their mouth. Beloved, it's about timing. God is about timing. And when we understand that, we understand how he delivered us and how he is able to deliver others whom we believe and are trusting God for. Amen. Beloved, turn with us to uh, the book of Exodus. That's what we've been studying from the book of Exodus in the third chapter of Exodus. Uh, we have come to the 13th verse. Uh, the word of God says, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Beloved, Moses was simply beginning to give excuses 
to God. Well, when I get to them, they will want to know your name. What shall I tell them? Moses wanted to know, what can I do? What can I possibly bring to the equation that they might know that I met you? I have to have a name to give to them to say who you are. Beloved, did he really need a name? Were the people really going to ask him uh, what is his name? Not necessarily so. And maybe they would have. Maybe that was a legitimate question. But Moses wanted to know, how can I uh, uh, um, make myself not look like a fool? By saying to them, um, I spoke with God. What will they say? What will they ask me? Well, what is his name? And beloved, many times we are caught up like that. We want some type of evidence in order to prove that we are a child of God or to prove that God has said something to us in our spirit or to others. And many times we remain silent because we don't really trust the Lord God. An example in my own life. I remember my uncle, Uncle Joe was his name. Um, I was living in Houston at the time and he, he had moved from Houston and was now living uh, in Port Barrow, which is my hometown. But he was there and, and he was also in the nursing home. Um, in Opelousas. And I remember the Lord said in my spirit, and I was coming to uh, visit my parents from Houston. And myself and uh, uh, Uncle Joe had developed a real good relationship because I li uh, lived with him and my aunt for a, a season. Well, in my spirit, the Lord said to me, Go tell him he can walk. Because he was in a wheelchair at the time. And go tell him and tell him that he can walk. Because I've been praying for him. And you know what? I continue to pray for him. I continue to intercede for him. And I'm not as mature, was not as mature in the Lord as I am now. Because I was in the beginning of my relationship with the Lord. Well, I decided not to do that because maybe I didn't want to say that to him and then uh, uh, and embarrass myself and embarrass God or in any kind of way because I, I just thought he had been in a wheelchair for maybe a, a year now or maybe longer. And it's, you know, I just... Just, as I might say, or we might say, I just didn't feel it. So I didn't do it. I left. Uh, I, I, I didn't go. I went to my mother and visited my mother and dad, and, and then I left. And I went back to Houston. And I think I called mom back. I believe that's the way it was. And I was talking to her uh, when I after I got back to Houston. And one of the first things she told me, that you know that Uncle Joe is back uh, walking again. And I mean, almost dropped the phone. I couldn't believe it. What? He's walking again? I didn't do my assignment. I didn't go and share with him. You know, I'm saying this in my mind now because I know what the Lord has spoken to me to do. And I did not do it. And you know, 
I had witnessed to him before, had shared with him before, and here was a grand opportunity for me to share with him the power, the glory, and the magnificence of God. And I had simply just not done it. Now, just imagine if I would have just shared with him that he could walk. He would have maybe not believed me, but then he would have started walking later as he did. And beloved, that would have been the greatest witness in his life that God was able to do it. But he got up from that wheelchair, seemingly, beloved, get this now, seemingly on his own accord. So he had nothing to reference it to but his own strength, just as Moses did when he killed the Egyptian. So truly, this would have been the grand opportunity. This would have been the effectual door opening for my uncle. But I failed. And beloved, I failed because I looked upon what I could do. What I would say. How, um, what, uh, words I would use to share with him who sent me there. And beloved, the same one who sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel was the same one who was speaking and sending me to deliver my uncle with a word. Of simply just saying, Uncle, you can get up from that wheelchair anytime you want. God has healed you. Beloved, my prayer was after that, I prayed that someone else had done it. Someone else had said to him, one of the nurses, maybe one of the people that was there said to him, God has delivered you. You can get up from there. I don't know, and I don't know to this day, because I missed out on a grand opportunity, because I put me in the equation. And beloved, many of us do that without even realizing it. But look, beloved, look how the Lord answered Moses, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Glory be to God. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am had sent me unto you. And that's all I needed to say. The Lord sent me unto you, uncle. That's all I know. We don't have, have, have to have a conversation about it. We don't have to uh, me stand around and judge uh, for you to judge what I'm sharing with you. Only thing I can say to you is the great I am said you can get up from there and walk. And beloved, I, would have, I could have left there and he would have got up and walked eventually just as he did. Maybe a day after I had already uh, left from the city, he got up. But yet it was not I who shared with him. And the Lord was just simply letting me know that it's time for him to get up and walk. And he knew that it was time for him to get up and walk. Yet he had not done it before. But he wanted me 
to witness unto him and to share with him. And beloved, we have to learn how to wait upon the Lord and when we hear the Lord, begin to move in the direction that he has called us into. And God said, moreover unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel. I'll give you the words to say to the children of Israel. The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob had sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and of Jacob appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you out of the affliction of, the, of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Glory be to the living God. God promised that he was going to bring the children of Israel to a land filled with milk and honey. That he was going to overcome all his enemies and all their enemies and bring him to bring them to that place. Beloved, sometimes when the Lord gives us something to do, he doesn't necessarily detail it out. Step one, step two, step three, step four of how he's going to do something. He simply tells us that we are at point A, which we know, and that we'll get to point B in due time. He tells us the actions that will take place. He didn't say, let me tell you how I'm going to deliver the children of Israel. Uh, he didn't say, I'm, uh, he just said where he was going to bring them and to deliver them to. But sometimes we want so many details before we take our marching orders. We have to be willing to take our marching orders even when the details are not plain and clear to us. We just have to believe what God says to us. And sometimes it just simply go in this direction, not knowing exactly what we are going to face. How many times you yourself have come to a situation in your life that you were planning on going one way and then you went another way and there was this great uh, dilemma that you are now facing in your life and you say, wow, if I would have went that way, I probably would not have faced this. But beloved, when we go in directions like that, the Lord God is there already to deliver us. That dilemma does not surprise him. It may surprise us. We may try to turn away from it. We may try not to face it, but beloved, we will face dilemmas in our life if we intend to walk under the effectual power and strength of the Lord. And God was not giving details unto Moses. Well, how are you going to do this, God? I can imagine with the thoughts that was going through his head. I understand what you're talking about, but our people don't have weapons our people are, are weakened. Our people are all these other things. How, how are we going to feed all these peoples in the desert place? How are we going to get across the desert? Beloved, that is not what we ought to be concerned about. What we should be concerned about is, Lord, you send me. And if you sent me, then you're going to provide the provisions and the strength and every 
thing that I need for my journey. And beloved, the great I am will every time. He will not fail you. No matter what journey he has put you on in this life, he will not fail you. He will not forsake you. He will be there with you to the very end because he is the great I am. And you have to put all your trust in that fact. He is the great I am. I no longer am going to trust in my own will power, but rather his power. Beloved, when we believe his will power, no, his power over our will power, then we are delivered from many uh, difficulties in our life because we're putting our trust directly in him. Beloved, we've got to trust the great I am. We've got to put all our hope in the great I am because he is our only hope. There is no other hope. We can no longer trust in our willpower, our ingenuity, our cleverness, our own wisdom, or simply the wisdom of man. But we have to trust in the Lord and put all our hope there that he is able to do what he said he will do. Amen. And beloved, we will find ourselves overcoming many situations in our lives that we are at a stalemate right now. Amen. Beloved, may the Lord truly bless you and may the Holy Spirit continue to guide you and keep you. And beloved, if you have a prayer request uh, or, or uh, some other uh, correspondence you want to do with us, you can contact us at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown, Post Office Box 186, Youngsville, Louisiana, 70592. That's post, box, post Office Box 186, Youngsville, Louisiana, 70592. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, and may He continue to give wisdom to your understanding. Be blessed.